Yeah. So you mentioned Brittany Griner. Um, yeah, Brittany, she she's making millions in Russia. Yeah. Like crazy. What crazy. do you think as like just your experience being abroad and like what's going on with her? Like what can you share your thoughts on that at all? I can tell you that I'm sure she's scared as hell because um, like just being overseas yeah, people love you because you're American and you're a professional basketball player, but their lifestyle is completely different. So the things that you think they understand because they show you so much love, they don't. So it's like, you know, she got busted for like, I think it was like little cartridges, of like vape pens or something like that, something so small. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I got sick over there. And this is when I learned that like, overseas life is different and this is where we have a privilege in america i got really sick like food poisoning we they had like this holiday where they sacrifice a, a lamb and you eat it so, and lambs are not doing you any favors on this yeah, trip. Not at all yeah their animals are not on my side but they you know sacrifice their lamb i went to my teammate's house in azra morocco it's like the forest of morocco and um, her family sacrificed the lamb or whatever, you know, cured the meat. We ended up traveling back home. And that night, um, I just remember feeling super sick. And it was hot and everything. I figured, you know, I was just hot, tired from the taxi ride and, you know, stuff like that. I, got, I was super sick for like two weeks, like bloated stomach, like bad, horrible food poisoning. So I'm like, I need to go to the doctor, go to the hospital. Wait, first of all, let me back up before I even go to the hospital. I It took forever for me to get, you know, uh, my team to get care for me because they're just like, oh, like, you'll be fine, whatever. Like my teammate who's normally there that handles things on their side wasn't there. She's out of town. So I'm like trying to get in touch with someone who speaks English because, you know, I'm in so much pain. I'm about to faint every five seconds. I don't know what's going on. And uh, I finally am able to get to the hospital. First of all, their hospital walking up to it was like, I couldn't even like explain how much traffic was coming out and into the hospital. It was really weird. So it was like a bunch of people coming out, a bunch of people coming in and you go in and you're like in this lobby area and they have rooms on each wall and it's just like lines everywhere. So we get in line. The person that we were meeting was already standing in line for us. So we get in line and we go in this room and it's like just a room no doctors or anything. There's just two people sitting at a table and they're like, what's wrong? And they're like talking to them, like telling them like my stomach's hurting, blah, blah, blah. The lady comes up to me. She takes like a toothpick, looks in my mouth and is like, oh, she has, what'd she say? She's like, she has uh, tonsillitis. And so I'm like, we leave. And she's like, yeah, she's saying you need like antibiotic for your tonsils or whatever. And I'm like, no, like I've had tonsillitis before. I know my tonsils are huge, like whatever. I don't have that. So it's like, I never got to see a doctor and I'm like, no, like I need to see someone. I had to like push the situation. Ended up seeing this doctor at a soccer field in a locker room, moral of the story. He recommended some drugs to me. I went, got them, took them, didn't make me feel better. Like literally and it's gotten to a point where it's like, I think I have a tapeworm, like I can't eat, I can't do anything. So I'm freaking out. And just like being an American, you know, we can just easily go to the emergency room quick fix. Oh, yeah. Oh, so like this was like a two week prolonged like sickness. And uh, in the end of it all, like I had to go to like a stomach doctor and they did like uh, MRI or whatever on my stomach. And yeah, I had like really bad food poisoning, like a, a bad worm. It was horrible. Damn. Yeah. It was did it feel to just be taking like mystery medicine in That's a foreign country too? That's another thing. Like the medicine comes and it's not in English. Like it's either in Arabic or French. And like, you know, you can translate French, but yeah, it was, it was hard because I didn't know what I was taking. And I, you know, I was scared. Like, am I going to be okay? I didn't even but, want to take ibuprofen in like foreign countries. Cause I was like, I can't read this. I don't know yeah. what the hell, like you don't know what's in it. And I, people oh. took stuff when I was traveling where like they took it and they're like yeah I don't think what I took was that <laughs> like they yeah. start feeling all weird and it's yeah. it's a, and they also like they sell stuff 
that you normally can't get like right the, over the counter you can get like painkillers and stuff like yeah. you, you, it yeah. just it's crazy yeah so no. it's so different oh 100 percent. it was it was really hard to understand that too because i'm like first of all they don't in morocco they have a lot of strict like laws on what they allow in their country so it was like you don't know what you're taking because you know they don't they're not importing a lot of things that we import at home here so it's like you have no idea where it's coming from or what it is or who it comes from Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's um i was just thinking like yesterday i i heard uh i don't know if you know the fifa world cup stuff it's in qatar and like there's a lot of uh issues and concerns around like the uh restrictions that they have in that country mm-hmm. like there's no alcohol sales so it'll be soccer games without beer uh, yeah which is crazy and then um there's a ban on same-sex marriage there too so like a lot of the teams are, are protesting like did you experience anything similarly in morocco where it was just like uh government restrictions that just seemed crazy or just not crazy but like completely different than what is in our country yeah um i wouldn't say so much government things um i can't really remember any time that we like came across the law like that besides like you know, when we travel, we definitely get stopped by the police, like the federales. Mm -hmm. But um, I can say that during Ramadan was the hardest because things weren't open at all. Oh, yeah. It was weird. Like, we weren't worried about drinking alcohol, me and the other American, because she's she was from Chicago. You know, I'm from Vegas, two major cities in our country. Like, Of course, alcohol is a thing in Vegas, but like we weren't worried too much about it when we got there. But for some reason, when Ramadan came around, it was like we were stressed out and needed a drink. We couldn't get to any liquor store at all. Really, Like it was super banned. Yeah. And just like being on our team, we had a lot of like. I wouldn't say codes or restrictions, but there was a lot of like uh, our president watched us for sure as if we were like younger. And so that was like always annoying because like he would ban us from doing anything. Really? Like, yeah. Like one time uh, our teammates went home for one of their holidays. I think it was the end of Ramadan. And we were like, yay, things are open now. Like me and the other American, like we have freedom to go do what we want. We don't have anybody to answer to right now. We found a hookah lounge and we went to this hookah lounge. We're in there for like 45 minutes, went home. And when my teammate came back the next week, she's like, yeah, I got chewed out by our president because he thinks that I took you guys to this hookah lounge. And like, he just thinks that I'm letting you guys do all these bad things and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I told him that I didn't do that. But like, did you guys go out? And I was like, I mean, yeah, we did. But we didn't know like he had eyes around the city like that literally wherever we went wherever we did he knew about it Damn. and it, yeah it was not fun <laughs> how sick though was uh, an actual moroccan hookah lounge it was fun but yeah. it was so hard to order a flavor like oh yeah <laughs> yeah it was it was hard because that was like our first time being out without someone who could translate and so like <laughs> translating on the phone was horrible they didn't know what we were saying but like the hookah was it was it was pretty cool honestly yeah. to see I smoke Moroccan shisha or whatever they call yeah. it. It was fun. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. it is kind of lame. Like to get busted for smoking hookah is like, right. That, that's so lame. <laughs> it was just funny because we had no idea where we were at. And so she was like, we were like, what's the big deal? And she's like, well, the one that you went to is for like hookers and like <laughs> girls like that. And so we were like, Oh, we had no idea. <laughs> that was really funny. But. It is funny. Hey, if you like that video, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and follow our page for new weekly content.